Hi, I'm Keiko at Wisteria Suri Ranch, and today I like to talk about our livestock guardian dogs and how they protect our alpacas, as well as like how we ended up choosing dogs over other um, guardian animals. So, um, I did take some of our dogs in the field <laughs> since I'm actually in my little alpaca barn. Um, where right now the dogs are actually in their spaces, spots, <laughs> working <laughs> and not in here. So you'll get to see the animal, the dogs, um, in different clips. Hey, Sailor. So this is our Sailor. And he actually was adopted as a livestock guardian dog, farm dog. Oh, he's got to go to work. You can follow them. <laughs> They do take their job seriously, which is awesome. Not sure what they ran towards, but um, yeah, we'll go check it out. Okay, so, um, so the reason why we ended up selecting dogs um, over say like um, other animals that are used um, are llamas and donkeys. Um, it's pretty simple. I felt most comfortable working with dogs, <laughs> so I went ahead and picked the dogs. And I do think they are probably the most effective um, under many conditions um, for our property. So it really depends on your setup. I've heard of people who work with donkeys and they do the perimeter and keep a lot of the um, predators out. Um, one little problem or potential problem with donkeys if they run with your alpacas is that they do they are stronger and if they accidentally kick a young animal that can be very dangerous and you know same thing goes with dogs too dogs can make mistakes so um that that's why we pick dogs now within uh the different livestock guardian dog breeds there are many different breeds that could work for you um we are in Texas, so there's some um, uh, dogs that are more uh, readily available. Um, but we decided to go with working with uh, rescue dogs. So we wanted to adopt livestock guardian dogs um, from organizations and work with them. So that brings, um, so there are different challenges depending on, you know, if you get puppies or animals that are already trained with alpacas. Um, most of the times from a rescue, they've been working with goats or other livestock. So there's always going to be a retraining process, um, which you have to kind of take into consideration. And you really want to know what you're doing with these dogs because they are big, they are very powerful, and they are independent thinkers. Um, I absolutely love dogs. I love working with them. So, um, you know, I was up for the challenge and really wanted to do it. So we did set up our farm in a way where we can adopt rescue dogs um, and work with them successfully. So the alpacas um, are kept in their area at night when we can't always, you know, stay up and supervise them. So. Um, the dogs um, work the perimeter at night. Now during the day, once they are approved and trained and adjusted to our farm, the dogs have free access to the pens because we keep the barns open. So um, um, that's the setup has been a huge part of our success in working with rescue dogs because if they're not supervised and they're out in the pasture, it, you know, and they never work with say alpacas, and you know they're they're going to be potential challenges. So, when we do bring in new um, rescue dogs, we um, initially start them in a small yard or a kennel to get them used to us, and then we'll put them on a leash and bring them around and um, introduce them. And we do that for a while until we're pretty confident um, that they're going to be okay. And then once they're off leash, they're fully supervised. I correct them gently and kindly um, and um, kind of teach them what's allowed and what's not around these animals. So, um, yeah, and I absolutely love and hope y'all support, uh, yes, the Blue Bonnet Animal Network, no, Animal Rescue Network um, barn. Um, I'll put a link below. They're an amazing organization. They uh, will check 
each of the dogs to see what um, livestock they're okay with, as well as like your cats or chickens, dogs, um, other little dogs. <laughs> so you get a pretty good idea of how they are. And also they check for, um, you know, whether they're jumpers or diggers and other interesting quirks like that. <laughs> um, okay. So again, to that fencing part, um, so you will need to make sure that you have appropriate fencing to keep your dogs safe as well. Um, and I think I may have mentioned somewhere that we keep everybody close to the house, so we close off pastures, we pen up the alpacas, and the dogs only have to really patrol near the house so we can hear them and if they're in trouble or we think there's something happening, we're out there um, making sure our dogs are safe as well because we absolutely adore them and love them and don't want anything to happen and on that note we always have at least two working dogs outside so that they have a partnership they have backup um, they can take shifts and um, their safety is also of um, you know utmost concern so at night we actually close this gate towards the pasture um, that way our dogs are only um, our working dogs don't have to patrol a particularly large area, so they have access to kind of like the closer to the house area and around the girls' barn and the boys' barn. And there's our little Iris. So in the mornings, we open up the pastures and we actually take our guardian dogs and our inside little dog um, out kind of for sort of a walk with us, um, just so that we can make sure there's no um, predators still hanging out or doing anything like that. <laughs> We've never had anything um, like that happen, except, um, yeah, once. <laughs> we did uh, find a coyote that got stuck on the fence, so that was not good. Okay, so our dogs are taking a walk. This is Sailor in the back, and Tanner in the front. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Iris! So Iris is our senior guardian dog. Uh, we adopted her at almost 10 years old and she's 11 and she has been the most amazing guardian dog and mentor to our younger um, Tanner. And we adopted her from the Blue Bonnet Animal rescue network in uh, northern Texas and they are amazing and so <laughs> she actually does the night shift she's very serious I think she's got some An uh, Anatolian Ampere mix um, amazing personality uh, we just absolutely adore her and she loves to be outside she loves to go in her tub water tub and cool off hey Iris what do you smell? <gasps> Hello, gorgeous. Yeah. Hi, sweetie. You are so pretty. <laughs> You're so cute. We love you. We love you. We love you. Oh. <laughs> okay, are you walking with us? <laughs> and all of our dogs get along really well. Um, we've actually never had any incidents with um, Iris. The two um, boys over there, uh, they had to kind of work things out initially. So those are things that, you know, you do have to figure out and work through. Um, but they've been really good together for a while now, so <laughs> we're really relieved about that. Hey, Tanner! Oh, what did they see? <laughs> I'm getting you in the, in the shot, honey, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. And we definitely spend time with our dogs and um, bond with them. If you have any like questions.
questions, um, you know, feel free to contact me, reach out to me, and if it's a video I can make, I'd be happy to make it for you. Um, if it's a quick question, I can answer it. Um, you know, I'm not sure where you're watching this. If you're on YouTube, you can just, I guess, write comments below. Um, if you're on my website, contact me maybe through the contact us. So, yep. Anyway, um, hope you found some of that information helpful. Um, bye. <laughs>